slight favourite just coming down now to pick up her bat and get some last minute advice from the Croatian women's team coach. I'm Matthew Side, alongside me in the commentary box, Ian Marshall, former national team coach of England. Steff, Ian, beat Tamara Borosh in the women's team final to give Romania the title. Borosh looking for revenge. Well, certainly, and Boros was in a commanding position. It was the vital match in the women's team final. If Tamara Boros had have won that match, then Croatia would have had the gold medal. And there we see, uh, I think, Stan Clark from England, is it? And uh, ready to uh, to umpire. But uh, I think Boros just has one or two problems here. The first one is she desperately wants this title. For the last four or five years, she's been uh, the number one uh, European woman. She's been the highest ranked European woman in the world, but never European women's singles champion. I spoke to her earlier this year, after the Slovenian Open, after the Croatian Open, where she lost semi-final and quarter-final stages, and uh, all those tournaments were preparation for this event. And, of course, here we see uh, the other problem she has. She's playing her women's doubles partner. Later on this afternoon, these two young ladies will be at the same end of the table in the women's doubles final. So they know each other very, very well indeed. So the two players just uh, completing the formalities of the warm-up. Two minutes just to get the feel of the hall and to get the ball nice and warmed up. Boris, 27 years of age. And Mikhaila Steff, the left hand of Romania, just one year younger at 26. Highly talented, very good hand feeling, great repertoire of shots. And as you rightly point out, Ian, both these players desperate to win their first European women's singles title. European Championships, the third most important competition in world table tennis, behind just the Olympic Games and the World Championships. Both these players have promised so much over the years. Borosh, highest world ranking of number two. And a lot of people said, Ian, that she really was Europeans' great hope to upset the Chinese in either the Olympics or Worlds. Hasn't quite happened yet. Well, not yet, but she's a very, very strong topspin player. She's very, very powerful indeed. But the Chinese, the Asian players, seem to be able to annul this power by being a little bit quicker and perhaps a little bit better over the table when you're playing close to the net. So, best of seven games, up to 11. It is Boris from Croatia, the number one seed, to serve at the beginning of the first game. And you see Boris deploying the high toss serve. The ball accelerating down, facilitating heavier spin. Any problem really with the high toss, so slightly more difficult to control the ball. But both players clearly into their stride. Rapid fire exchange at the beginning of this opening game. Oh, there we see the Borosh power in evidence. Backhand on the diagonal, acute angle. Exploding the racket head into the ball to get the power. 2-1. Mihaila Steff tried exactly the same and succeeded. And the problem that Boros has playing Steff and everybody else in the world has playing Steff is she's somewhat unpredictable and she can change direction on the table tennis ball very late because she's outstanding use of her wrists. And she's maybe the more confident player. In the last three years she's hardly ever beaten Tamara Boros, but of course in the women's team final she succeeded and has just tipped the scales. I think if we go back maybe four or five years, then Steph always used to win. But the tables have then changed. But have they swung again? Real. One thing for certain with Mihaila Steph, she'll take no prisoners. She's very, very positive indeed. And when it's close, she'll go for strokes. That's absolutely certain. If you see tomorrow, Boris there receiving service at wide stance. Yep. That facilitates her power Four. from that wide stance. Good use of the legs all the time from this Croatian player. rally. High quality from both players. Boros forcing Steph away from the table. But we saw the feel in the finesse in evidence with those wristy returns from the deep. 
And this match has come alive early on. Doesn't seem to be any fear from either player. But I think they both feel a real chance to claim their first major title. Nice counter top spin there from Steph. I think this is really an even money contest. Absolutely, and of course, they've both previously reached the final. Tamara Boris reached the final in 1998 in Eindhoven when she lost to Nee Zhao Lian. And two years later in uh, Bremen, it was Mihaila Steffa who reached the final. There she lost to the German Chao Hon Gotch, the defender. Let. Six four. Well, both these players with the capacity to drop away from the table and go topspin, topspin. Unusual to see in women's table tennis. Borsch perhaps a bit more power. Steph with those wristier technique. A little bit more topspin. 5-7. I think about three years ago, Matthew, both these uh, ladies spent some time in China training, trying to get used to the way the Chinese play, the different spins on the ball, and no doubt they've benefited from that experience. Yeah! So they're the Borosh high thrown serve. It's a technique she's had to change in recent years with the ruling from the ITTF on serving, where the left arm, in the case of the right-hander, has to be drawn away immediately she throws the ball up. Then she pulls the arm away. Previously, the arm used to come across the body with her serving action, so she's had to adjust. Yeah, something all players have had to live with. No longer allowed to conceal the action behind the free arm. There's a good start by Steph from Romania, the left-hander, just two points away from taking the opening game. 10-5. Good underspin serve, just dragged the return into the top of the net. Steph now with five opportunities to close out the opener. Very fluent start from the Romanian number one. And there we see it, first game to Mikhaila Steph, 11-5. Question marks immediately for the number one seed from Croatia, Tamada Boros. Well, we know Steph won when these two met in the team final. Had Boros won that match, it would have been Croatia's title. And Steph has continued in that vein right here. Boros being coached by Boulay. The two of them have had a relationship for many years. Boros, a player of immense power. But I just feel that in that opening game, it was the finesse and geometrical awareness of Steph that won the day. She is somebody who can play with great tactical ability. And she looks to have a dominant strategy. Well, that's right, but I think it was quite simple. She was better in the area of serve and receive. And I think she's slightly the better player over the table. She has such good use of the wrist, such good control, and that was crucial in that game. Also, Second I think game. she can get in a little bit quicker. Jackson. She attacks that a little bit quicker Level. than Tamara Boris. Boris needs that little bit more time. Yeah. Well, very aggressive from Steph, just along with that backhand counter topspin. In addition to the tactics and technique, this match is also going to be won in the mind. Borosh, a few question marks about her capacity to take her best form into the biggest matches. And to a certain extent, that question also asked of Mikhaila Stef. Considering the talent, it is very surprising that neither of these players have won a European singles title as yet. Two, three. Well, that's right, and Boros has been runner-up in women's singles events on the ITTF Pro Tour more times than anybody else in history. It's something like seven or eight times, I think. It's quite incredible. I saw a win two years ago, or three years ago now, it would be in Magdeburg at the German Open. 
She beat the Chinese defender Fan Ying in the final and gave a fine performance that day. Other than that, it's often been quarter-finals, semi-finals, and she's just fallen short. Yeah, we were saying before we came on air that she's developing a rather unfortunate reputation as the nearly person of women's table tennis. She will be very eager to dispel that here in Aarhus. And good use of pace by Borosh. Just throwing it up with slightly more topspin. Well, I think that's going to be the key for tomorrow, Boris. She can't play too fast against Mihaila Steph Let's because Steph will use a wrist to use the angles to win the points. Five, four. Slightly fortunate finger raised and acknowledgement. The ball just flicking the top of the net, disturbing the stroke formation of Boris. There we see the wristy serve. What a return from Boris, though. There was top spin on the serve. Very difficult to keep that type of spin short. Boris managed to do so. Steph unable to take the initiative with the third ball. Five, there we saw Mihaila Steph at the best. A very good return of serve. It maybe looks a very simple stroke to play, but takes an immense amount of control. And just look how Steph stands to receive service to the right-hander. Quite square to the table. That's something the Chinese ladies don't do. The Chinese girls tend to stand and face across the court as though they're playing another left-hander and then they just twist the body when playing the ball down the line. Steph much square to the table when facing Boros. And later, when we see the men, we'll find Colin Krang is very much the same. Six, seven. Perhaps Puskas both hail from Romania. Yeah. Good Eight, return six. from Boros. First return on the sequence of two, the flick down the back and the second heavy underspin. Two in a row against the serve, and now it's the Croatian with her two serves to come. High toss again. Yep. Nine, well, that's a magnificent six. service from Boros. Fast accelerating wrist, cutting underneath the ball, dragging the return into the net. Oh, that's fortunate Seven, from nine. Steph again. Yeah, so I think it was the right tactic to serve short. A lot of backspin on the service and try to spin the first ball towards the left hip of Mihaila Steph. Then she can't create wide angles. Yeah. Seven, ten. That was a tremendous backhand from Tapara Boris. That shows her strength, shows her power. Second game, Barrow. Slightly fortunate on that last ball, but she deserved it. That is the second game to the number one seed, Tamara Boros, 11-7. One game all. So this first women's singles semi-final, nicely poised at one game apiece. I think Boros served in return serve particularly well in that second game, and that was the difference. Once again, it's a close one to call, Ian. Well, it's very difficult. Um, I spoke to um, Tamara Boros earlier in the year, and I asked her about Mihaila Steph, and her answer was, oh, it's Steph. Quite simply, you're not sure what's going to happen next. She can produce runs of three or four points where she's absolutely incredible. And then when it's close, you know Mihaila Steph will be positive, very positive indeed. And in that game, Tamara Boy served well, good spin on the first ball, and that could be the key to her success. So encouragement coming from the Romanian bench. Boros to serve at the beginning of the third game. This match being judiciously umpired by Stan Clark, one of the great characters on the English circuit. I think the quality of the European umpiring is very high. Very good indeed, yes, certainly. Just looking back at this match, it would appear just watching these first couple of points that Tamara Boris is going to concentrate her first top spin very much into the hip. Try to uh, annul the effect of Mihaila Steph to grain wide angles. And perhaps 60-70% of Tamara Boris's services will be with heavy backspin. Well, there, evidence of Steph's wonderful adaptability. 
She was caught on the hop by that return, just stepping around and using her wrist to generate the pace. She's got such a wonderful repertoire of shots, hasn't she? Well, she's the one female player who can improvise, and we've seen two, two points now where she's improvised and won the point. <laughs> very, very high skill level. I spoke earlier about where Mihaila Steff stands to receive service, quite square to the table when playing the right-hander. Perhaps also notice when we see a receive service again that she stands very much towards the middle of the table. That enables her to see the Boris serve better. Ball three. Four points in a row for the Romanian. One more in the sequence of two serves. Oh, that's unlucky. Heavy topspin. The service return popped up, but there was just enough underspin to drag the Steff attempted flick kill winner into the net. Oh, that looked like no spin to me. Good serve by Boros. Final. That's perhaps where Steph is slightly the better player in the touch, the feel, the short game. And that, I feel, is where the Chinese beat tomorrow, Boris. Yeah, that's undoubtedly the case. And also Steph outgunning Boros in open play. Great backhand on the diagonal. Off the bounce, but you're quite right, Ian. One of Boris's major weaknesses is her short game. The Chinese so accomplished in that department. Short game important because if you can keep it tight, it means that you often get the opportunity to take the initiative with the opening topspin. Well, the Chinese coaches tell me that uh, the European women are much stronger and much more powerful than the Chinese, so they have to be better over the table and faster. But to be fair, when you see the reigning Olympic champion, Zhang Yi Ning, play for on top spin, well, seems pretty powerful to me. Seven, six. Very fortunate net cord. No real chance for Steph to recover. I think this third game could prove to be vitally important in the overall context of this semi-final. Yeah. Oh, just long. Six, eight. Good direction from Boros. First into the body, then wide backhand. Now a two-point advantage. Nevertheless, it's Steph with her two serves to come. That was a magnificent Seven, service from Steph. Just caught the top of the ball with the underside of the bat to create the topspin. That set up the opportunity. Once again, good serve. Same again, but this time missing the backhand down the line. Well, led off for Boris. But if there's a failing with Mihaila Steff, I feel that's it. She just tried to do too much. A little yes, bit more topspin, just play a little more efficiently. It was brave, but um, that's a bit too brave. Nine, eight. Well, that net cord has come into play throughout Time these out. three games. Fascinatingly, a timeout has been called rather earlier in the match than is conventional. Clearly, the Croatian national team coach has decided that this is a time where Boros might be able to change her tactics. Nevin Segnar and Boros have been together for so many years now. They know each other's minds. I'm rather surprised that he took it at that stage, Ian. Well, I think both players, both player and coach, realise what an important game this is. And I think uh, you'll bear me out with this, Matthew. When you were playing, if you could win a close game, then it gives you an immense amount of confidence. If you could win the 11-9, the 12-10 game, the very, very close one, then it gives you a lot of confidence for the next game. That's absolutely right. It's statistically significant to win any game, but psychologically, always a boost when you win those games by just the two-point margin. I rather wonder whether Segnar has decided for some kind of a long serve, a long fast serve. Let's see. 9 8. No, it stays short. Oh, wonderful combination. Backhand down the diagonal for the winner after the opening forehand. Look at the power. Using the forearm and wrist to generate the pace. Timeout seems to have worked. Two opportunities. 
take a two game to one lead. Nine, ten. Big point coming up. You can see by the reaction of Bosch that she knew she had a chance with that forehand. Just caught the top edge of the bat and went long. Big point now. Nine, ten. That is absolutely tremendous. And that sums up Mihaila Steph. That was exceptionally brave. She went for the backhand topspin across court and won the point. And that's an area, I think, where Mihaila Steph's going to win a lot of points out wide to the Borosh forehand. Alternate serves now, too clear. Oh, it caught the edge of the table. Borosh acknowledging the good fortune with the raised hand. Here we see it. No chance for Steph. Well, she went for broke last time she faced game point. Will she do so again? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Let. Let service. Well, she went for it, but it was long. The shot was on, but it is the third game to the number one seed, Tamara Bodosh. 12 points Boros to 10. Leads by two games and she'll be lifted by that. Always good to win a game by a two point margin. And undoubtedly now the momentum with the number one seed. Steph on the back foot. All right, DJ. From everything from board riding to BMX, check out the action and contest on Yo's Extreme Tuesday at 1800 CET, 5 p.m. UK time. And the word on the lifestyle in Yo's Mag, Wednesday at 1800 CET, 5 p.m. UK time. A double dose of Extreme Sports magazine, Tuesday and Wednesday on Eurosport 2. Marta Boris from Croatia. Such high expectations on her shoulders for the last decade, really. Considered the great hope of European table tennis, Mikhaila Steff in picture. Perhaps the most talented player in European women's table tennis. It's been a fascinating exchange so far. Steff taking the opening game comfortably, made the quicker start 11 5. Boros hitting back and winning 11 7 in the second, and then that crucial third game, 12 points to 10. So Boros in the ascendancy. Can she capitalize? Fourth game. Beginning of the fourth game. Steff to serve. Love to. Short service from behind the Steph. Lot of backspin, lot of underspin. Prepare from Steph over the table, keeping the ball short, touching it short, a lot of control. Only divider Sandra Pervic in the crowd supporting their Croatian colleague. High throne serve again from Tamara Boros. Four two. Follow. Follow. Oh, we said about a couple of minutes ago, Matthew, that if you win a close game, it uh, it gives you confidence for the next one. Four That's one. my theory gone straight out the window. Highly stuff four one ahead. Yeah, good start by the Romanian. <laughs> These four. games can turn so quickly. Good flick by Boros. Well, yes, I think that's the beauty of the eleven point scoring system. Personally, I'm very much in favour. Let two four. That was all about the length of the service from Boros. Second bounce would have been on the white line. Steph hesitated. Opportunity for Boros to make the winner into the body. Good comeback from Boros. Just slowed it down with that opening forehand topspin. Threw it up about an inch or so. There we see the topspin. Watch the kick off the bounce. And the deviation, ensuring that Steph could not make contact. Four in a row. Five, four. Yes, time and time again in this game, Boris is playing the first ball towards the left hip of Mihaila Steff. Crossover point, the indecision point, call it what you wish, but for the Shea Hands grip player, she has to make a decision. Does she play forehand or does she play backhand? Oh. 
Good drop shot from Steph. Soft hands. Boros, not the fastest player moving in. Slightly clumsy approach to the table, perhaps. And once again, a two-point cushion for the Romanian. Yeah, she snatched at it. Mm. The fluency deserted her momentarily. Good serve by Bosch. She's been serving short all match and threw that one acute on the diagonal. Steph not reacting in time. Made the point of Boris playing the first ball towards the left hip of Steph. The other point with that, of course, it stops Steph getting wide angles. But there yeah, we see Steph at her best. The way she changes direction, not only does she change direction, but she changes direction so late, that split second later than most players, and that's done by very, very good use of the wrists. It's fourth game. Still very open, two serves from Boris to come. Good return from Steph. Best return she's played so far in this fourth game. Kept it tight, trace of underspin. Fantastic play from Steph, but eventually the relentless top spinning of Boros winning out. A couple of beautifully constructed shots from the deep, but eventually the persistence paying off. 9-7. Good return from Boros. And I might see a timeout here. Yeah, indeed. Steph deciding that two in a row for her opponent was enough to give her the opportunity to take a one-minute break. I don't think this is a tactical break, perhaps just the feeling that Boris was gaining confidence. I think it helped that Boris won that long point. She won that topspin to topspin point. And I think when it comes to those sort of rallies, then I will back tomorrow, Boris. When it comes to playing over the table, it comes to a high skill level, changing direction late, then we'll go from behind the staff. But the long rally, I think, has certainly given uh, Boris a boost. She won the next point, and this is now crucial for both players. And you can see there in the face of Mihaila Steph. Yeah, the anxiety, very evident. Boros taking the third game by just a two-point margin. And now key moments in this, the fourth. 9-8. Yeah, good play from Boros again. She's making the opening topspin, and she's making it tell. Steph away from the table, attempting to get back into that point. With the backhand countertops been just a few inches long. Two serves then for Boros to take a three game to one lead. What a turnaround. Oh, a wonderful change of direction. Can you coach a player to do that, Matthew? I don't think so. Well, she shaped up to go one way and then the wrist at the last moment sending it into the open space. Oh, disappointment for Boris. The shot was on. It was set up. But it drifted long and that is the fourth game to Mikhaila Steff. 11-9 in this women's single semi-final now. Locked together once more at two games all. Excellent play by Steph to close out the fourth game. Well, we said at the beginning of the match, Ian, that this was a 50-50 affair, and that's been exemplified by the opening four games. Steph looks so confident and so composed in the opening game. Borosh bounced back, and the last two have been on a knife edge. Third game to Boris, 12-10, fourth to Steff, 11-9. How do you see it now? Tough question, is that, Matthew? 
the question mark's got to be, hasn't it, a little over how Tamar Tamara Boris responds mentally. Yeah. I've said it time and time again, you know, she's been the runner-up, the semi-finalist, so close, so many times. And, of course, in the team event, she was in a winning position. And in the fifth game, remembering the team event, it's best of five, she made the better start in the fifth game and then lost, I think it was 11-8. But uh, as the match progressed, Steph gained in confidence. Now, this game is absolutely pivotal. I think we've both seen Boris over the years go to pieces under extreme pressure. There's no doubt that she's feeling it right now. Can she cope? My recommendation to Barra Boris now would be remember the techniques that you've been taught. And keep your technique throughout the match. Just saw a little bit of hesitancy, I thought, in Tamara Boris' last game. When she went for the backhand topspin, the elbow was just a little bit tense as the racket head came through the ball. And so she hits the ball, she bends the elbow quickly on the attacking strokes. Just relax a little bit. Keep her feet moving. But now's the time, I think, to concentrate on your technique. She certainly has a very strong technique. So does Steph. Look at the wrist in those Steph backhands. Boros equal to them, however, blocking them down. Good start by the Croatian. Four, one. Just to develop that point, Matthew Wrongly Chin, the current world number one. He's had moments when he's got a little bit nervous in matches. And the advice from the Chinese coaches to him has been, when it gets close, concentrate on your technique. Make sure your technique will stand up. And perhaps that uh, is the best advice at the moment for Tamara Boris. change of direction by Steph. First two into the wide forehand, then into the backhand. Walsh just trying to fish the ball back from three or four yards, drifting long. Great serve. That came from nowhere. Once again, evidencing the ability of Steph to change the angle of the wrist just before contact point. Well, not only was it a change of length, it was a change of direction into the hip, which one which one it. French fist from Steph. She's liking this. She's blocking so well against the opening ball from Boros. A couple of times, though, she's missed when she's had the combination, forehand to backhand. Well, I think sometimes that Mihaila Steph just goes for a broke a little too often. I think sometimes she could just put that little bit more topspin on the ball. Five, I think six. sometimes she just does it a little bit too much. Well, unusually, a fault service from Steph. Oh, goodness me. You were saying that she needed to hold back. I don't think she's taken your advice here. And she really went for broke, exploding the racket head into the ball. I'm not sure there are many women in the world who can hit it as hard as that, especially on the backhand diagonal. I don't think you can play as fast as that. But if you speak to Mihaly, she said, look, I can't stop doing it. It's the way I'm made. Yeah, instinctively aggressive. Oh, but Bosch hits back with an explosive flick kill winner on the diagonal. With the forehand, it's a difficult shot to play. Technically perfect, head over the ball. And I think with Steph, sometimes I'd like to see the topspin maybe just go uh, a little higher over net and be a little safer. Still being positive. Oh, what a shot from Steph. And again, brilliant play from Mikhaila Steph. Backhand from the deep, stepping to the table to make the running backhand winner. That was a key point. And we saw the adaptability in evidence here. It was one of the, this shot here, under the table, just lifting it up. And then the backhand, followed up by another backhand. Two in a row for Steph. One point advantage for the Romanian number one. She's a joy to watch. With Mihaila Steph going to play like that, there are very few women in the world that can cope with that level of table tennis. Seven, 
Nine. Now there, she put a little bit more spin on that forehand, and it won the point. I'll tell you what, Bar snatched. That was not a comfortable shot. You could see the stiffness in the forearm. Well, now then, seven nine. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Bosch is looking under pressure. She's nervous. You can see it in her body language. The anxiety flickered across her countenance when she missed that block. She stiffened up. Three opportunities for Steff to go three games to two into the lead. A chance. Tenet. Well, certainly a chance. It was uh, a relatively slow forehand topspin, but the point before, the Boris serve drifted long, which, as you said, Matthew, shows a hint of nerves. So the psychological dynamic is intriguing as the technical and tactical one. Stop. And that's it, Steff, with the inside-out forehand. Takes the fifth game, 11-8. And now she is just one game away from going through the women's singles final. Stephanie and for me, Ian, Mark the difference Egan. at the end, a couple of pieces of Steff genius to give herself the lead. But once she had it, Boros really did fall apart. Well, yes, in that game, Mihaila Steff produced world-class table tennis. I mean, that would have worried any woman in the world, make no mistake, even the top Chinese. Absolutely tremendous table tennis from Mihaila Steff. But she's capable of doing that. Runs of three or four points. She can play absolutely out of this world. A tremendous talent is the Romanian. So Mihaila Steff ahead. So they're the story of this women's singles semi-final thus far. Steff with the initiative and the momentum going into the sixth Six game. game. One that Boros in blue, the right-hander, no. needs to win to stay in the match. Of course, both timeouts have gone. Yeah. 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 Oh, wonderful backhand. Love the last inch of the table, no chance for Boros. All in table tennis can travel over 100 miles per hour. It gives you just six one hundredths of a second in which to react. And the luck going Steph's way as well. And you rightly said, Ian, no timeouts left. She's nervous, Bosch. You can see it. She's stiffened up. She's looking very despondent. They saw a shake of the head. Steph's on a high, but can she maintain this high? Yeah. Wonderful change of direction from Steph again. First ball into the hip. The second one inside out into the open space. And she's on a roll, and there's little that Boris can do to stop it at the moment. Let five low. Let service. Fascinating, isn't it? Just got the sense at the end of that fifth game that Boris was stiffening up. And that has been evidence throughout the opening six points of the sixth game. Well, that's true, but take nothing away from Mihaila Steff. She has played incredibly well. One, six. Now then, first point for Boris in the sixth game. She's got to find something. She's got to dig deep. Got to do it quick. Let one six. Yeah. Serve drifted long. Poor serve from Bosch. Half long, handed the opportunity to her opponent on a plate. Steph took full advantage. You see how quick the elbow bent to impact to spin that ball. Seven two. Turn from Bosch. That was a nicely deployed touch shot with a bit of underspin to drag the Steff third ball into the net. Here we see it. She desperately needs two on service now, the number one seed to stay in this competition. Goodness me. The uncertainty very clear in that opening forehand. She 
is looking tentative. The single semi-final is drifting away. That's better. Well, this would be a monumental effort to come back in. Well, up to 11, anything can happen. But Mihaila Steff, if I know Mihaila Steff, she won't hold back. She'll be positive. And Boris is now playing some of the best table tennis for the last five or six minutes. Well, I think there's a bit of resignation when she went six love down, and she's thrown caution to the wind to a certain extent. She's going for her shots, but that was a clever serve from Steff. Bit of extra slice. Oh, good forehand top from Borsch going for the long, fast serve. Steph equal to it. Now five match points for the Romanian number one. Seven ten. Sorry. What a thing to do to your doubles partner, Miffy. Let. Let's serve. Ten six. And there it is. Mikhaila Steff beats her doubles partner, the number one seed, Tamara Boros, four games to two. And she goes through to the women's singles final. Warm applause from this crowd in Aarhus. Steff will be delighted. Tamara Boros, bitter disappointment, yet to win the women's singles title and it's not going to happen this year in 2005 it is Mikhaila Steff who goes through to the final winning four games to two I rather wonder Ian how Boros is going to recover from this defeat another huge disappointment for her so one wonders about how she's going to feel because almost every European Championship people say this is going to be her year never seems to be her year well she'd be desperately disappointed this was one of her main goals in 2005 now she's got to go away sit down look ahead look ahead to uh, 2005 in Shanghai at the end of April beginning of May where it's the World Championships in Shanghai and in 2003 she reached the semi-final stage can she do the same again in a month's time so that's it for the coverage here on Eurosport 2 if you want to continue watching table tennis switch over to Eurosport continuing coverage of the women's singles second semi-final between Li Zhao and Lu Jia